when everything comes together and when it works, you get lovely illustrations that would have appealed to children and to adults. This particular one of the McLaughlin Brothers books is actually printed on linen fabric instead of paper and of course would have been intended for younger children who might be rather hard on their books. It's again chromolithographed and is amazingly detailed. You can see that the quality of the illustrations is much higher than it was when uh, only the wood engravings were being used. These are steel engravings that have been run through the press numerous times. You can see by the number of colors. Imagine how many times that had to run through the press. Um, not only did um, McLaughlin Brothers print books based on a famous song like Yankee Doodle, this particular version has many more verses than most people are familiar with, but they also did series of books of um, animal illustrations. Oddly enough, uh, some of these are probably actually English illustrations since uh, there are no varieties of squirrels in America that have ear tufts like those. Those are European squirrels. Any books with animals were always popular. This particular one is domestic animals, ones that many children would probably have seen every day, but the illustrations are quite remarkable. Again, another one of the linen books. Sadly, they tend to chip the color as the book is bent, the color will often chip off the linen, but this one is in quite good shape considering the number of times that some child must have looked at it. It's um, a counting book. And of course, counting books are still very popular today. Shape books were another popular item in the late 19th century. This one, of course, would be uh, completely unacceptable to us today, uh, Topsy being one of the characters in uh, Uncle Tom's Cabin, but uh, also came to be just a generic um, name for African-American children. And the um, text, of course, is completely unacceptable to us today. Uh, although the illustrations in this are not nearly as exaggeratedly unattractive as they are in many other books of that nature. These are two very interesting examples of toy books. Pantomime was not particularly popular as a theatrical art form in America. It is still popular in England. Uh, pantomime has uh, rules that are as strict about the casting and the characters as um, the Japanese kabuki plays, but they're um, funny and exaggerated, allegedly based on uh, folk tales and fairy tales, but uh, they always have uh, a dame who, of course, is played by a man in very exaggerated makeup. Um, they always have a principal boy who is played by a female. And the um, songs are, are much more exaggerated than the actual tale. You can see that uh, from the illustrations here that some of the characters are a little exaggerated. This is a version of Puss in Boots which has um, more to it than Puss in Boots the story actually has, but interestingly the pages are cut of varying sizes to display something that looks very much like a stage set even to the, to the music and the audience. 
and the text is only at the beginning and the very end. Interestingly, as is typical of a pantomime, the very last scene is a transformation scene in which all the characters change their costumes and become um, t characters from fairy land or um, in this case from uh, the ballet of Harlequinade even uh, has a policeman and I don't think that there was ever actually a policeman in Sleeping Beauty. The uh, Wicked Witch is a particularly interesting character in this riding on a, a dragon that looks like something out of Revelation in the Bible. The McLaughlin Brothers firm flourished under the two brothers, but sadly, after Edmund retired, the firm began to decline. John was successful for a while, expanding the company greatly and buying into every new technology for color printing, for producing books, but the a fire at the firm and competitors who were doing things not in as good not as good quality and cheaper of course began to hurt McLaughlin brothers in 1907 John Jr died his two sons took over the firm Edmund had already retired and he had no children to succeed him. John's sons were not nearly as interested in the production of children's books as their father had been, and they experimented with other types of printing, but the firm languished. In uh, 1920, the stock, the plates, the machinery, and the goodwill of the firm were all purchased by their competitor, Milton Bradley. Milton Bradley is famous to most people now as the uh, manufacturer of many different kinds of games. Milton Bradley did keep the McLaughlin brothers' name and their staff. In the 1930s and 40s, Milton Bradley began producing a series of pop-up books called the Jolly Jump Ups. Jolly Jump Ups were a family and they did a variety of things. They traveled all over the the United States, and in this one they attended the circus. This one is not a very sophisticated pop-up book, not as finely uh, engineered as some of the pieces that are being produced today, but it's still very attractive. And the, they were very popular and are now very collectible. Pop-up books, of course, are fragile and don't always last nearly as long as they might, uh, particularly when children are playing with them and looking at them over and over again. This particular one, the pages are actually boards. The McLaughlin brothers' name is not very obvious on it, but can be seen here on the front. And they also, of course, to coincide with World War II in 1942, produced a whole series of books about our Army and our Navy. This is the history of the United States Army and takes it up to the present day, 1942, by which time, of course, America was in World War II. The Milton Bradley sold the McLaughlin brothers' name to Grosset and Dunlap Grosset and Dunlap by the 1940s was primarily a reprint publisher. Initially they had started out as uh, producing original materials, but by the 1940s and 50s the um, firm had begun to issue inexpensive reprints of popular children's series books. The um, McLaughlin brothers can, uh, name continued to be used by Grosset and Dunlap well into the 70s, but the firm was no longer associated with uh, these gorgeous picture books. They were simply um, one more line of Grosset and Dunlap. Grosset and Dunlap 
uh, itself went out of business in the 1980s and the McLaughlin brothers name has passed into history, to the history of American printing. But uh, as long as libraries retain lovely books like this and are able to preserve them for future generations, then McLaughlin Brothers will still be remembered.